Now let me discuss the various classes of diuretics and their site of action. You take the first group of drugs that is carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. We have the loop diuretics, then we have the thiazide diuretics and the next include the potassium sparing diuretics and lastly we have the osmotic diuretics. So these are the various classes of diuretics. You take this carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors they act at the level of PCT. So at the level of PCT the drugs which are acting is carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. All right. Next we have loop diuretics. Where does this loop diuretics act is? This loop diuretics they act on the thick ascending limb. So we in the thick ascending limb we have discussed that there is presence of sodium potassium 2 chloride channels. So in this the thick ascending limb where you have the sodium potassium 2 chloride channels there the loop diuretics will act. Right here the loop diuretics will act. Next we have the next group that is thiazide diuretics. See here this is the distal convoluted tubule. So at the level of DCT remember the thiazide diuretics will act. That is we have a channels that is sodium chloride channels or sodium chloride transporters. So on this particular sodium chloride transporters the thiazide diuretics will act. Next, we have the potassium sparing diuretics. Remember, the potassium sparing diuretics, they act on the collecting duct. So we have the collecting duct. On this collecting duct, the potassium sparing diuretics. Right, on this collecting duct, the potassium sparing diuretics will act. So this is the these are the various sites at which these particular diuretics will act. Now let me take up the individual diuretic and let me discuss about the individual diuretics mechanism of action, the pharmacology or the uses and the adverse effects of the individual classes of diuretics.